Crazy Duelist and welcome to another video. Um, so, um, I, yesterday, uh, as I was practicing with like a couple of decks that I've been playing uh, for this next uh, format involving Cyberstorm Access, I came across a very interesting opponent with a very interesting deck. And it kind of tells you that this set was not just good for like current support that we already know for popular strategies but it's also good for legacy support for other archetypes um, so I'm gonna play fast forward here and I just you're just gonna see the deck uh, that I faced against uh, the deck I faced was Dino Morphia um, so I was playing like the Cosmo deck um, like the Cosmo that you've seen beforehand um, I'm not gonna go into details with what happened on this duel. I'm just gonna play the duel uh, outright um, And I'm just gonna share some shower thoughts um, so Dinomorphia um, Is a deck that kind of was forgotten um, Like the, the, the deck debuted in Battle of Chaos the cards were uh, ridiculously strong then in Dimension Force, they got another really good card, uh, which is like Dino Morphia Frenzy. Um, but yeah, like we never see saw the deck take off like recent. Um, I think it was mainly due to like the power level of the other decks that we had. I guess like just and the Rexstrom uh, wasn't like the best thing for them. But I think another issue with Dinomorphia was like they had no consistent way of using like their other cards. I'm gonna pause this uh, this here right here just because I want to talk about this card. Um, so for those who don't know, this card came out in Maze of Memories. Um, it's called Soul of the Supreme King. So what it does is you pay half your life points and you summon Sark. Um, it's effects are negated, so you don't have to worry about it blowing up your cards from hand or it being untargetable however there is one other effect if your opponent activates a spell card or effect um you can banish this and banish the zark and special summon one of each of like a pendulum xyz synchro and fusion dragon from your hand deck extra deck and their graveyard um this card is really really strong because it it gives um, Dinomorphia very uh, high level of offensive pressure um, and high level of offensive pressure is something this deck lacked like just having Rexstrom and having been controlling the board was not really enough for this deck so just having a card that can help push uh, through what your opponent has is a card that kind of makes your opponent have to think twice if they want to activate a spell card like the monsters you do summon out of this are not negated you do have spots in your extra deck because you only need to summon Redstrom. so like you, you can just play like five to five to six dinomorphia cards and everything else is not an issue um so yeah um that's one card that i kind of want to talk about um then we'll talk about the other cards that really helped this deck um so i'll just keep playing the duel um now he goes um but yeah like the thing about it is like dino morphia i feel is going to be a deck that's going to be very slept upon i think somebody who can like build this deck properly will have like a lot uh, like a lot they can do with it um he, he here he opened miscellaneousaurus and like miscellaneousaurus is like really really strong in a deck like this because you know you're generally you're protecting the Rexstrom but like again offensive pressure to your opponent um uh so something to talk about here like misc is doing his second effect uh it banished four um misc is really strong because with frenzy you're already sending multiple like extra deck monsters and main deck monsters to the graveyard which means if you get to enough name uh, numbers you can summon resummon another um like uh another um this chick uh theresia and theresia can set you another trap and that would just be more follow-up for for him um 
Obviously, Log is very strong and Rexner is very strong. So let's go to the deck. Um, so two cards that they received from Cyberstorm Axis was Dynamorphia Intact and Trap Track. Let's start with Dynamorphia Intact. Dynamorphia Intact. Uh, basically, you play you pay half your life, um, and it makes it so you need you need. Uh, negate the activation of a monster and blow it up you need to control a dynamorphy for that um the other um but take note that um let's see any battle damage you take for the rest of this turn becomes half your life point if you would to take it this is really really strong because it makes it so you do not lose to your, you do not lose uh, um, you do not lose this turn um, like so having a searchable monster negate that you can activate at any point unlike solo strike um, and can make it so you don't die for the turn is really really strong in a deck like Dynamorphia um, like as you already saw from the duel I showed this deck has ridiculous follow-up um, if you resolve like a Theresia or a Dynamorphia um, resolve like Miscellaneousaurus uh, for example like this deck is not inconsistent like you have Prosperity you have Fossil Dig you have Dytheresia herself, like, um, and one other card I want to talk about is Trap Track. So Trap Track, what it does is you target a monster you control, you blow it up, and if you do, you set a trap directly from your deck. Um, not every trap deck can play this, but Dynamorphia is a deck that can, that can because all your Dynamorphia monsters uh, do have a floating effect if they're blown up. Um, so trap track not only does it help uh, facilitate into like your domain or your frenzy which is like the cards you're looking for um, but it's another card that synergizes with the deck because uh, for example if you have a Diplos or you have let's say you have a Cantagena or a Rexterm or a Stalbergia that your opponent like kind of negated or did something about uh, you can Break, you can turn them into Theresia, and Theresia will set you another card, um, and that will just make everything like playable again. Um, so yeah, um, not there's not a lot I kind of want to talk about um, when when it comes to this deck, but like keep an eye out, keep an eye out for Dinomorphia. Like this deck, once it goes off it goes off like it's really really hard to stop it has a snowball effect the deck is actually consistent at what it does um obviously it's a trap deck it's not amazing going second um like so you have to take note of that but whichever deck or strategy can build around this that can make it so it can go second um like I feel like has a very very good advantage um like there's a deck I built long ago um let's see if I can find it um I think it's this one it's something very close to that give me a second let's see if I can find it um is it this one Yep, yeah, it's this one. Um, so, I never showcased this deck because uh, I built it like three formats ago. But it's something I built involving like Dinomorphia, True Draco, um, Alistair. It has the Dogmatica card, so you can see you have Nadir Servant. You play a Plethora of Fusion. I also play Branded Fusion in this. So, like, I'm playing like the Branded Fusion cards um, with the one Albas. Something really cool about this deck is that it plays Golden Lord, and Golden Lord has uh, synergy with your True Draco cards. Um, but this video is not about this deck. 
Ah, the only reason I'm showcasing this is because you can easily fit something like intact in a deck like this one because I am playing Theresia. Um, and it's just another really strong card. Um, like, and like this is a this is technically a Dinomorphia deck. Um, but it has the it but it has the true Draco cards that are really really strong when you're going second. Um, so yeah, um, I just wanted to talk about Dynamorphia Intact. I just wanted to talk about like uh, the card in general. I just wanted to talk about like things involving Cyberstorm Access because I feel like um, there's still a lot to explore with this set, despite the stuff we already know like Satellers and Super Heavy Samurai purely. Um, but yeah, thanks for tuning in. Uh, keep practicing and keep doing.